Okay, cool. Um, so today we're going to be talking about composition in LG, uh, but since it's been a while since this seminar has run, I think we might spend most of the time just reminding ourselves of what we've talked about so far. Um, so let, uh, and I'll say as well at the start, I've tried to like, you know, have lots of reminders of stuff that we've covered so far, but if, if I say something that you don't remember what it is, feel free to just jump in and, and ask me to, to remind you about what it is. Um, okay, so uh, let K be uh, a commutative ring. Uh, and so recall that the, the LG has the following data. So G consists of uh, one uh, pair. So the objects are uh, pairs. K, X, and U, where uh, K, X is a polynomial ring in possibly more than one variable, uh, and U is a polynomial, uh, specifically a potential, uh, which means that it satisfies the following conditions. Uh, so first of all, uh, the sequence of partial derivatives Uh, uh, the, so the sequence of partial derivatives, um, I guess for, uh, the causal complex, uh, that should be dx1, uh, let me correct that, there we go, um, okay, the causal complex of this sequence, uh, is exact except in degree, oops, um, except in degree zero. And uh, in a couple of moments, I'll remind you about what a causal, we'll do a refresher on what a causal complex is. Um, and uh, B, uh, the Jacobi ring, so the ring which we call JU. Uh, which is this quotient ring is uh, a free and finitely generated K module. For some end. Okay. Um, and I guess we'll move over to the second board. So, so that's the objects of, of LG and the, uh, so two, the morphisms or the one morphisms uh, are, <clears throat> so a one morphism from uh, say a potential KX U to KY V uh, is the following category or the one morphisms are the following category. Uh, so I'll write it down and then I'll explain what it is. So U of X. Um, so this thing here is the, the homotopy category of matrix factorizations of uh, the polynomial Vy minus Ux. And this thing here is the idempotent completion of this category. Um, so another way, so an equivalent way to say this is that a one morphism um, of, of this, uh, between these two potentials or between these two um, between these two objects is a matrix factorization, which is up to homotopy, a direct sum and of a finite rank matrix factorization. Um, and the equivalence of uh, the idempotent completion and this sort of closure under looking at direct sum ends 
uh, is proved in in some of the notes that I distributed uh, way back in in February. Um, okay, are there any questions so far? Okay, cool. Um, so our goal is to look at composition in LG, and we do composition by taking the the tensor products of of matrix, matrix factorizations. So consider the following one morphisms in LG. Oops, too many brackets. Call this one y dy. So where y is the is the module and dy is the differential. Right. Um, and uh, we define the composition to be to be the tensor product. So uh, the composition is the matrix factorization. Um, X tensor over KY of Y. So that's that's the module. Uh, and then the differential is DX tensor one uh, plus one tensor DX, oops, sorry, DY, uh, where this tensor product uh, between uh, morphisms, so over here, uh, is happening, is the, is the graded tensor product. Um, so it's not immediate that this, actually is a well-defined uh, or is a is a good definition for or a correct definition for composition. Um, so, and that's because it's not clear whether this thing actually lies in the right category. So uh, our matrix factorizations need to be free modules uh, over their respective, you know, the, the rings that the matrix factorization is happening over, right? So say, say we have X is equal to, to this thing uh, and y is equal to uh, this thing, right. uh, then the module, the tensor product over ky, uh, you can show that this, this thing is the following module. <clears throat> And this is free, but it's not finite rank over uh, over KXZ. Right, and so this means that it's not immediately clear that this thing is in fact a morphism um, from here to here, right? And we're going to be proving that it actually does lie within the item potent completion of the homotopy category. Okay. Um, so, Rowan, is that the reason yep. why we're taking the odd component completion? Um, <laughs> to get well defined this of composition? Yeah, um, I guess I don't know. Like, it's necessary in the proof. Um, like, we use that the that this category is closed under taking direct sum and. So, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to show that. Uh, that, uh, where did I write it down? This matrix factorization is the direct sum end of a finite rank, make, finite rank matrix factorization. Um, mm -hmm. But I suppose that doesn't show that it's not just finite rank itself. I think I've talked with Dan a little bit about this, whether you could just get rid of the item potent completion, but I can't remember exactly what we, what, what Dan said about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. there's something. But at this point, sorry, you don't know. Yeah, there's examples where it need not be, um, well, uh, the question is, is it always isomorphic to something finite rank? Um, yeah, uh, off the top of my head, I actually don't know. Um, I think there's a counter example, but I've forgotten it. So yeah, good question. Okay. Any other questions about this? Because um, now we're going to move on and talk about uh, causal complexes before we get stuck into into this. <clears throat> okay. Cool. Uh, so we'll take a look at the third board. 
Um, okay, so causal complexes. There's a S here. Um, so this is sort of a, I guess, a quick introduction to co causal complexes and exterior algebras. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess there's maybe better ways to, to set, set this up, but I think this is the sort of fastest way to, to get intuition for, for how they work. Um, so uh, let R be a commutative ring. And in the case of LG, or in the case of what we'll be doing, R will be a polynomial ring over K, right? Um, and uh, let V be a free R module, uh, where, uh, or rather, with free generators E1 through EN. Um, so the way I'm going to set this up is we're going to we're going to define a associative bilinear formal product on elements of V, uh, so uh, subject to a relation, right? So uh, we define. Sorry, what's the notation on the R and the V equals R something? Yeah, sorry, I'll rewrite that. It's uh, n copies of R direct sum, right? Okay. Is that clearer? Yeah. Cool. Um, okay, so we define uh, this formal product, which we denote with a wedge, <clears throat> um, as a uh, to be to be associative bilinear or k bilinear, I guess. Oh, so, uh, sorry, r bilinear. Um, and subject to the relation generated, uh, so the relation generated by setting uh, u wedge v equal to minus v wedge u um, for all u and v in v, right? Um, and uh, in particular, this means that V wedge V for any V in R equals zero, right? Um, and, uh, okay, now we define the, the Pth exterior, the Pth exterior power of V uh, which we denote by big wedge PV um, is the set of P fold products of elements of V. Right. Um, and one can show that uh, this is a free R module. Uh, with the following uh, set of generators. I won't, I won't do this now because I want to keep going. Um, but uh, is free over R with generators. Um, oh, I hope I can fit this in. Maybe I'll write this like this. Um, so all uh, p-fold wedge summands. Oops, sorry. All p-fold wedge summands of the generators of V, um, such that the indices are strictly ascending. Right. So I one is strictly less than I two is strictly less than, et cetera, all the way up to IP, right? 
Um, so in particular, so moving on to the uh, fourth board, uh, in particular, we note that the dimension of this thing is n choose p, right? So that's just a way of counting those ascending sequences. Um, and so, for example, we'll have a look at the case of n equals 3. Um, we have that the first, or sorry, the zeroth exterior power uh, is generated by 1. So it is equal to uh, it is equal to R. The first exterior power is uh, generated by E1, E2, E3. So it is equal to V. Uh, the second exterior power is generated by uh, E1 wedge E2, E1 wedge E3, and E2 wedge E3. <clears throat> and then uh, finally, the third exterior power is generated by a single generator, E1 wedge E2 wedge E3. Uh, and then for all other uh, exterior powers, it's zero, right? Because there's no such sequences. Okay, uh, and then finally we define the exterior algebra of V. Um, which we denote by this thing. Um, is the, I guess, the algebra formed by taking all the pth, uh, the pth exterior powers of V, right? And then looking at the, the wedge product that you get between those elements um, is the graded, oops, graded R algebra with pth graded component. is the pth exterior power. OK, any questions about that? OK, That's cool. Good. I have one question. Which um, is, mm -hmm. uh, how can you possibly call this symbol a V? <laughs> oh, yeah, in latex. <laughs> Well, it looks that, a bit, that's or did I call it, it a V? It, it looks a bit like a U. <laughs> where are you pointing? <laughs> uh, where am I pointing? Uh, I think that pick, means pick one. any of these. <laughs> oh, any of them, <laughs> right. Uh, of yeah. Yeah. So this, so, some of them are kind of Vs. Yeah, this one I would call a V. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just being a jerk. It's OK. okay. No, no, that's, that's fair <laughs> <laughs> They just look like um, Vs. They, they just look like upside down Vs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's... It's meant to be a lambda, but <laughs> <laughs> capital <laughs> lambda. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, I'll uh, I'll try and sharpen the visa. Um, okay, let's go back to the first board. I guess I better walk over there as well. Uh, oh, hang on. Okay. Okay, so now we'll talk about uh, causal complexes. So um, we define um, so uh, I suppose let T T uh, N be a sequence of elements of R, right? And we're going to define the causal complex of this sequence. So definition, the, the causal complex of T, which we denote, uh, rather I'll say, is the pair K 
kt uh, dk. Um, where kt is just the uh, exterior algebra of uh, the n copies of uh, R, so we called that V before, um, and dk is a morphism So it's an R-linear map uh, given by by the following uh, assignment on the generators. So uh, to a generator E1 wedge EI2 wedge EIP, uh, we assign this to the following sum. Sum from j to p and it alternates um, and this becomes t i j so the i jth element of the sequence t um, multiplied by the generator e1 which e i j emitted Oh. E I P, right? So, oops. So basically, on the the right hand side, we're we're summing over um, each uh, each of the the products in sorry each of the factors in this product on the left hand side, and uh, removing one one at a time, and this sum is is alternating in sign and getting multiplied by the um, by the elements of this sequence as we go. Right. Um, we'll take a look at some examples, but but before I do so, um, one can show uh, that dk squared equals zero. Right. So the causal complex is uh, is a chain complex. Um, okay, so on the second board, let's take a look at some examples. Um, so, uh, oops. so for a sequence of length one, uh, so T is just a single element T1, um, then the causal complex is the following chain complex. where this middle map is just multiplication by uh, the element T1. Uh, and then the other example we'll look at is uh, the case of N equals three. Uh, then where we have this thing, three, oops, no. <clears throat> Okay, uh, and then say over in this first thing, this this or oh, sorry, this degree three part is generated by a single generator, say e one wedge e two wedge e three, and this thing gets sent to the following sum, right? So we start by emitting the first uh, element of this, uh, sorry, the first element of this product, um, the odd. Every, the, the odd factors get a positive sign and the negative factors get, sorry, the even factors get a negative sign. So uh, this thing becomes T1 E2 wedge E3, uh, sorry, minus, minus e T2 E1 wedge E3 
plus T3 E1 wedge E2, right? Um, so is it kind of clear how that, that differential works? I could go through some of the, another example for uh, the degree two part, um, or are we, we have- Makes sense that? for me. Okay, cool. Um, I'll mention a couple of things uh, that I won't prove um, that are sort of, well, we need, we need to know them. <laughs> um, uh, so you can observe uh, that. Um, so the degree zero, the first thing is about the degree zero homology of the causal complex. So the degree zero homology of, of this complex uh, is the quotient ring uh, R mod T. So this thing being the the ideal generated by the elements of the sequence uh, T. Um, and the other thing it's useful to note, uh, and this is covered in 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 Weeble, the reference which I which I note in the in the notes for this talk, um, is that the the causal complex. So I'll omit the um, the differentials in this in this expression, um, but the causal complex of T is the tensor product of the causal complexes uh, of each of uh, the elements. Right. Tn, right? Um, and on the right-hand side, uh, as for the differential, this this tensor product is is the tensor product of, of complexes or the, the graded tensor product. Um, Okay. So Rowan, that kind of looks like K1 tensor, sorry, KT1 tensor K T1. K tensor oh, yeah. KT1 sorry, tensor K T2. Yeah. Yep, yep. So you're right, this should be going, you know, increasing as the as the sequence as we go through the sequence. Okay. Um so with tensor products uh covered, we'll go on and I'll list out some of the results that we talked about in previous talks. Um well the ones that we're gonna be using. Uh, in order to prove that composition is is well defined. Um, okay, so how are we doing for time? Oh, cool. <clears throat> okay, so in this section, uh, let S be a commutative ring, R and S algebra. So the example to keep in mind is the case when uh, maybe S is K or S is a polynomial ring like KX and R is a polynomial ring over K or uh, in the case that R is, sorry, S is equal to KX, uh, R is equal to KXY or something like that. Um, okay, and then uh, let uh, L DL and M DM, uh, the matrix factorizations of uh, some element uh, in, oh, I haven't defined that. Um, uh, of some element in uh, this thing where, where this thing is the, is the structure morphism of the uh, algebra structure on R, right? Um, okay, so uh, the first thing we need to remember is the definition of a strong deformation retract of complexes, uh, of uh, rather of linear factor of matrix factorizations. Um, so a strong Oops, SD. So a strong deformation retract um, of L and M uh, over, over the ring S consists 
of the following S linear maps. Um, Uh, where PI is the identity, um, IP is homotopic to the identity via H, um, and uh, HI equals zero, H squared equals zero, and PH equals zero, right? Um, these three properties at the end are what make the deformation retract strong. If we didn't know that these were true, then we would just have a deformation retract. Um, so the point is, well, a, de a strong deformation retract is a homotopy equivalence of matrix factorizations with some additional conditions on the maps involved. Um, the point being is that strong deformation retracts are the types of homotopy equivalences that can be modified that can be modified using the perturbation lemma, which we um, stated and proved in the previous talk. Um, for now, though, we're just going to recall the uh, one of the corollaries that we proved about the perturbation lemma. So we'll go back to the first board. Um, so corollary. Corollary of perturbation lemma. Um, okay, so suppose we have um, uh, an SDR, a strong deformation retract um, of L, DL, and M, DM, as before. Um, so with exactly the same maps uh, involved, uh, then for any uh, matrix factorization Z of G in R such that uh, F plus G still lies in here, uh, there exists um, a strong deformation retract over S, um, where we've taken the tensor product of matrix factorizations on both sides of the previous uh, strong deformation retract. So we have uh, the following uh, strong deformation retract. Z uh, for some different uh, homotopy H prime. Um, okay, so that's a tool that we're going to be using to to modify our our homotopy equivalences. Um, the next result, uh, which we proved in a previous talk. Uh, gives us a source of these things. Um, so uh, lemma. Um, so let PD um, be uh, bounded uh, chain complex. Um, of projective objects. So in some abelian category, um, uh, and suppose uh, it is exact except in degree zero, um, and that H zero, so the degree zero part, which is possibly not zero, is also projective.
Oh, okay. Yeah. Does it come? Cool. Can you remind me what bounded means? So is it eventually um, zero? Or something? Yeah, yeah. Bounded, bounded is it's eventually zero complex. in both in both directions. Um, so we get we have a whole bunch of zeros out to the left and a whole bunch of zeros out to the right. Well, um, is Rowan speaking? I can't hear him. Ah, uh, yeah, I am. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, man, how am I? Yeah, okay. Uh, Rowan, can you say something again? Uh, yep, I'm currently talking. Oh, okay, I'm back. Yeah, I can hear Rowan oh. now. Okay. Okay, cool. could, could you just repeat the answer to your question, please? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're right. Bounded means that eventually uh, out to the left and out to the right, we have a whole bunch of zeros. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Right. Thanks. This thing actually only needs the chain complex to be bounded to the right, but I didn't want to write all of that mm -hmm. up on the screen, and we only need, we're only going to be working with bounded chain complexes. So. Cool. Um, Thanks. Okay. So uh, given these hypotheses, hypotheses, we have uh, a strong deformation retract from this thing, which I'll say something on, uh, to the original chain complex, um, where this thing uh, is the homology of PD with zero differentials. But really, it's just a single object, right, concentrated in, des in degree zero and a whole bunch of zeros everywhere else. Um, OK. So this is sort of way more general than we need. We're actually only going to be applying this lemma to uh, the case when P is a causal complex. Um, so just to be um, clear, I'll, I'll state this now in the terms uh, that we're actually going to use it. Um, so. Uh, this lemma is really follows very directly from from the previous one. So uh, let you so here k x is is some polynomial ring possibly in many variables um, be a potential um, and uh, let this thing as before. Um, be, uh, uh, yeah, let this thing be the sequence of, of partial derivatives, um, and J U, um, the Jacobi ring. Um, then we have a strong deformation retract, um, from the Jacobi ring where the Jacobi ring is, is concentrated is living in degree zero, and we have um, zeros everywhere else, uh, and the uh, causal complex. Right. Okay. So proof. Um, well, uh, U uh, potential implies that uh, the causal complex. is exact in degree zero. Um, and uh, the, causal, the, the components of the causal, each greater component of the causal complex is free, um, hence projective. Uh, and uh, the fact that U is a potential also means that U, JU, is free uh, over K. Oh yeah, I should say this strong deformation retract is over k, um, and then we just apply the the previous lemma, and we get this this strong deformation retract um, written above. <clears throat> okay. Any questions on that? Okay, good. Um, so now we can move on and actually talk about composition in LG. Um, composition. So consider 
um, the following uh, morphisms in LG. Uh, so everything here is a potential and a matrix factorization, all of that. Okay. Um, now our goal is to sh is to prove the following proposition, which shows that uh, composition in LG is at least well defined. Um, so uh, the matrix factorization. Um, X tensor over KY, Y, the X tensor one plus one tensor DX, uh, DY, sorry, um, is a uh, direct sum and of a finite rank matrix factorization of uh, finite. Finite rank matrix factorization over, uh, so finite rank over uh, K, X, Z, right? And that will sh well that that shows that it uh, lives in the in the category uh, that we want it to. Okay, so we'll start with the proof, and then we'll uh, get to a point where we get stuck, and then we'll need to prove a couple more lemmas, and then that will finish off the proof. Okay, so. We uh, we begin with the uh, with the strong deformation retract arising from the causal complex of the partial derivatives of v. Right. So let um, this thing um, be the sequence of partial derivatives of v and um, JV, the Jacobi ring of V, All right? Um, then we have a strong deformation retract over K. Um, uh, between this complex. Uh, and uh, the causal complex okay and then we apply our uh, our tensoring lemma right uh, so we'll take a look on the the fourth board um, so the second to last lemma that I stated um, says that we can tensor both sides of, of this matrix factorization um, by uh, anything we like, as long as we end up in the right place. So I'm going to tensor by uh, K, the, the matrix factorization K tensor um, Y, right? So tensoring by um, X tensor K Y, uh, y, D, uh, X, it's a Y gives a SDR over uh, K, X, Z, right? Um, between, uh, so on the left-hand side, I'm just going to rearrange this tensor product. Um, where I guess that's a little bit of abusive notation, but you know, it's that differential. Um, 
Uh, and on the right-hand side, um, well, tensoring and then pulling out uh, a tensor factor of, of Ky from, from the causal complex or from the exterior algebra, um, which is the mozzle, uh, module of the causal complex, gives us uh, the following thing. So we have the exterior algebra over K in N variables. So I guess here, um, Y is a polynomial ring in N variables. Tensored with K, um, and then this thing is tensoring K, X, Y, Y. Uh, and this thing has differential uh, DK plus um, DX tensor Y, right? Um, okay, so notice that on the left-hand side, um, we have the, so the next thing to notice is that the left-hand side is, is finite rank. So uh, JV uh, is, um, oh no, that's okay. Uh, so JV is isomorphic to K uh, tensor M for some M in N. Um, and then that means that we have the X tensor JV tensor Y is isomorphic to K X Z, right? To the power of M. Um, so on the left-hand side, we have our finite rank matrix factorization. On the right-hand side, well, in degree, this thing is the direct sum of its uh, of its graded components, and in degree zero, this thing is just k, right? Um, so that means that uh, the left-hand side. Oh, sorry, the right-hand side has uh, X, or well, the composition, as a uh, direct sum end. Okay, so we're really close, right? Because we've got a strong, the, the modules are all lining up, um, but on the left-hand side, we still have this uh, additional differential uh, still persisting from, from the causal complex. Um, so in order to remove that, we need to prove a couple of couple of lemmas. Um, we'll show that we can we can safely get rid of that thing, uh, and then we'll be done with our proof of this proposition. Um, what do you think? Should we? It's been an hour. Should we? Should we leave it here? Is there another talk after this, or um, were there any questions so far? I maybe should ask as well. Um, are we happy to keep going then, or uh, I can I can start on this uh, next time? Um, maybe like max fifteen minutes. Yep. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. All right. So let's go back to the first board. Um, and then, oh, great. I've got the perfect excuse for this one then. Uh, so we're going to finish this proof off, uh, with the following couple of lemons. So the first one, uh, I'll state, but won't prove. Um, so let F and G, um, from C, D, C to D, 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 uh, be morphisms. Of either complexes or uh, matrix factorizations. Um, then, if uh, F 
is homotopic to G, then the cone of F is isomorphic to uh, the cone of G, right? Where the cone of F is, uh, so the cone of F is uh, the shifted complex V1, um, direct sum D uh, with the differential DC minor, uh, no, sorry, positive F uh, and then uh, minus DC. Oh, that's got to be wrong. It's got to be D. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. And there's a proof of that in my notes. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, so the point of that one is it, is it lets us prove uh, the next lemma. So uh, lemma. Uh, so let T be a sequence uh, in R. So R is a some community of ring. Um, in which each TI acts null homotopically on um, uh, on uh, linear factorization on a matrix factorization. X DX. Um, then uh, we have the following isomorphism of uh, of matrix factorizations. Uh, so we have an isomorphism between the causal complex tensor over R with X. So this thing has differential DK tensor one plus one tensor DX. Uh, and this thing is isomorphic to the same thing, but with the causal uh, complexes differential removed. Um, so, okay, so let's prove this. Um, let's take a look at the third board, sorry, second board. Uh, so proof. Um, so consider the map. Uh, so I kind of won't go into it full details here because we'll cover this again later when we discuss uh, the maps involved in the cut operation. Um, so we'll consider the map TI, which is just multiplication by the element TI. Um, and uh, one can check uh, that uh, the causal complex of the single element TI, um, the K, I guess I'll call this KI, um, this thing tensored uh, as matrix factorizations over R um, with uh, X is just the cone uh, of TI, right? Um, now, since TI acts, oops, acts uh, null homotopically, we have uh, the cone of TI, so this is by the previous lemma, uh, that the cone of TI is equal to uh, the cone of zero acting on uh, X. Um, and this thing, well, this is just X uh, summed with a shifted copy of X with uh, 
the usual uh, differential on this thing. <clears throat> okay. Um, then we can note that uh, that x direct sum with a shifted copy of x. Well, that's the same thing as looking at it like this, right? <clears throat> um, and we also know uh, know that the causal complex KT is the direct sum of KT1 through to uh, KTN. Um, okay, and then this this pretty much gives the uh, desired equivalence, right? Because we we start say from from the right hand side, uh, we replace KTN uh, with the cone of KT of 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 TN. Uh, then we replace this by uh, by the cone of zero, which is just this thing that removes that part of the differential. Um, and then by by rewriting this thing like this, we then get uh, what we had before, where we've removed one of the, the causal differential or part of the causal differential, uh, and we still have this copy of X tensored with the remainder of the things, and we sort of continue by uh, induction. Um, cool. Is that sort of somewhat clear? Yeah, that's a good sketch. Makes sense. Cool. Um, okay. Okay, so this lets us remove the causal differential when the sequence is uh, null hom homotopic. So really, it just remains to show that the sequence of partial derivatives acts null hom homotopically on any matrix factorization, so on X and Y. Um, so we'll take a look at the third board, and this is our last lemma. Um, uh, so say for all I equals one to the N, uh, the partial derivative Um, so this thing acts null homotopically uh, on X and Y. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so uh, we'll show it for X and the case for Y is identical. So uh, fix uh, K basis, I suppose I should say K generating set, uh, for uh, for x um, and let uh, this thing denote um, the the map given by differentiating. Um, the matrix, the matrix of dx entry-wise. Um, you can show that this entry-wise differentiation still satisfies the Leibniz rule. Um, so we obtain the following, right? We have that the um, derivative uh, of V with respect to YI, well, that thing is the derivative YI of uh, DX squared. Uh, oh, sorry, no, it's not. It is uh, VY minus uh, U of X. And then that thing is derivative of DX squared. Um, and then applying the Leibniz rule, we get uh, dx, dyi, dx, plus uh, dyi, dx, dx. 
right? And this exactly gives a, uh, a homotopy equivalence between between this partial derivative uh, multiplication by this partial partial derivative and multiplication by zero, uh, with this thing being the homotopy in question. Um, and then similarly for y or any matrix factorization. Um, okay, so what have we shown? Uh, the previous the previous couple of uh, lemmas lemmas have shown that uh, we have shown um, there is an isomorphism. I'll call it. I think I've already used phi um, from uh, the left hand side of what we had before. So that was k. Uh, this exterior algebra tends it over k um, with uh, x tensor ky of y um, d, uh, dk plus dx tensor y. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, and to this thing without the causal differential. Uh, so k n tensor over k, uh, say so I'll call it z, dz, uh, where okay, and then this completes the proof of of our original uh, proposition, right? We now have having in combining the the homotopy equivalence of the strong deformation retract we came up with before, and this isomorphism gives us a homotopy equivalence between a finite rank matrix factorization, um, which we showed before, and this thing over here, which has the matrix factorization x tensor uh, y as a direct sum end, um, and then that completes our proof. Okay. Are there any questions? Yeah, maybe it's worth just remarking that it looks like a tensor product there, but since the differential on the ex there's no differential on the exterior algebra, that's just a direct sum of copies of z and z shifted by one, which is what you see. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, yeah, so so in degree in degree uh, zero, this exterior algebra is just k. So when we tensor by uh, z, we just get z. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, that was also okay. as good a presentation as I think it's possible to give on this in an hour and fifteen minutes. That was that was nice. Thanks. No worries. Um, Cool. So yeah, next next talk we'll start talking more about the cut operation. Great. Thanks, Ron. Okay. Thanks, Bye. Ron. Thanks, Ken. Cool. Thanks, Ron. Thanks. The only problem with this talk is the speaker doesn't have a pair of cow pants, but you can fix that for <laughs> next time. <laughs> I, know, I still need to get my head around the avatar. <laughs> <laughs>